27th day of May 2019, allegedly according to that thing we call a calendar. And despite all kinds of last minute difficulties and everything else, uh, here I am cooking here in the great state of Georgia in a metal box, sweating to death and stressed out as all hell. The Ocelli effect originates from Ocelli.com and is heard in a variety of other places. So now I had difficulty connecting with Jordan Maxwell before the show uh, and uh, tried to, even though I talked to him for a little bit oh, just before an hour had hit and uh, uh, previous to showtime, but I'm going to take a break now and go get him so I don't torture you with the Skype. Hold on, guys. I'll be right back. So, there you go. Quick, 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 quick break at the beginning of the show because I didn't want to torture you guys with the sound of the Skype. <laughs> That's really what that comes down to. Uh, and uh, Jordan Maxwell is with me. So, we are going to continue the series on astrotheology tonight. And uh, uh, quite honestly, you know, Jordan, you, you missed the opening part where I explained how hot it is in Georgia. <laughs> um we have we have uh, record setting heat and I'm sitting here pouring in sweat regardless of what's going on and uh <laughs> you know it's just it is the way it is when you live in a metal box uh so there there there's that to consider but before we go on any further yes Jordan Maxwell is with me let me remind you that the only website that exists okay because there's a lot of places that have Jordan Maxwell's name on it there's a lot of uh, little video stops and stocks and things and pages that are using his name. And it almost seems like it's his website. But guess what? There's only one website that is his. And that is jordanmaxwellshow.com. Yes, you have to put together jordanmaxwellshow.com to get to the only website that is actually Jordan Maxwell's. Uh, not only that, but it is the only place where you can get into the Research Society, now I, I provide you guys with a link directly to the Research Society if you want to sign up. Uh, I am a member, just so you know. Uh, it is a one-time fee, helps to keep that sucker going. There are terabytes of information still waiting to be added, but there's already a ton of deep dives on tonight's topic, as well as uh, monetary policies, the government, the behavior of modern man, if you will. Uh, well, gee, religion in general, we did a series on that, but a lot of interesting stuff over there, including uh, audio, video, images, articles, uh, things uh, specifically curated by Jordan and uh, also created by Jordan. Hey, in addition to that, though, there is just a public area where you can contact Jordan. You can make a donation toward his well-being. Uh, and, well, there's also a couple of streaming videos. A few other things over there. I urge you to explore jordanmaxwellshow.com. Okay. Now that I've gotten that out of the way, um, and believe me, it's not like it's a chore. I really do want you guys to go and sign up and interact and email Jordan and everything. Uh, uh, whatever it is you have the resources to do, you should do it. A lot of learning can be had at jordanmaxwellshow.com, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not being paid to say that, I assure you. Uh, Jordan can't afford to pay me to say that. <laughs> so that's why those contributions count. I mean, I can't afford to pay me to say anything either. I say it cause, uh, cause I really believe it and I'm more than happy to, uh, to direct anybody that I can over to his website and only his website. We can find Jordan's work in a lot of places, but you should go straight to the source. And you guys know I believe in that. And that is jordanmaxwellshow.com, the only website that is Jordan Maxwell's. So astrotheology. We started to uh, uh, lay out a bit of a plan last week as to uh, where this series would go. I mean, really, I we why am I saying we? I didn't lay it out. Jordan did, uh, and 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 I just agreed. You know, this is uh, uh, quite a bit run by Jordan because I don't even know how to present this now. The general topic of religion, I had an idea. I had lots of ideas. You heard them, <laughs> you know, you heard them interwoven with Jordan, you know, give him a chance to take a breath and then you'd hear from me a little. Uh, this is different. This is something that, uh, quite frankly, uh, I only first heard of really through Jordan Maxwell. Um, I dare say that most of the people that, uh, that discuss this topic, if you find them discussing it, uh, either they, they ripped it off from him or they were inspired by him 
fine line between the two sometimes, but um, or or they're pretending to be him. <laughs> so it, it's it's pretty interesting when we can actually talk to the uh, the 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 originator, so to speak, the guy who uh, who, who showed all of us uh, a lot of interesting things, a lot of interesting parts of the code, if you will, in the Matrix or whatever it is you want to call it. I know that movie's popular, but man, there was a Matrix long before somebody said Matrix. And uh, astrotheology is a wonderful primary example of this where a great deal of truth and reality is encoded in societal norms, in the given story, in the fundamental foundations, the principles that they tell us all the time, right? Uh, the, the Western civilization is formed on a Judeo-Christian foundation. It is uh, 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 literally driven and, and sculpted by the biblical stories, and that's true. But what if there's a whole lot more information in there in addition? See, that's the thing. It's not a historical document. If it was a historical document, you read your history, you interpret it, you're done. There's a lot more information encoded in the uh, biblical stories, in the reality of the characters and the characterizations of individuals, play, people, places, and things, actually. So it, it goes way beyond just individuals. Uh, but uh, th th there's a lot more to it. So I honestly don't know how to even begin to unpack that. And last week, Jordan started doing so. So uh, I hand it over to you to continue, Jordan. And um, l like you were saying you know, last week we talked about the sun quite a bit, uh, and, and that would be the first observable portion of this. Um, I have no idea where you want to go next, and I'm anxious to uh, to hear. Well, thank you again for allowing me to be with you, and we'll, we've been spending a lot of time on theology and religion over the past few months. And uh, my idea that I wanted to get across is that the story and the New Testament of Jesus is, in point of fact, a metaphor. It's a symbolic story. And the bottom line on the symbolic story is that Jesus represents the truth and the light. He is referred to as the truth and the light. And therefore, the truth and the light, L-I-G-H-T, goes back to the idea that the sun and Jesus is called God's Son, the light of the world. And, of course, the sun that comes up in the morning is the light of the world. And so what I'm trying to say is that Jesus represents a symbolic story of the war in heaven between the sun and the prince of darkness. Hmm. The prince of darkness is evil and dark. And anything that, and like dark humor or dark knowledge or dark operations, things which are in the dark are obviously in the dark because they don't want them in the light. They don't want people to see what they're doing and what they're actually saying and doing, so they refer to it as works of darkness. And so this works of darkness is opposed to God's Son, the light of the world. And the sun is the light that lights our world. Without the sun, there is no light for us. <clears throat> and so what I'm saying is that the story of the New Testament is simply the world's oldest story that mankind has ever known. It's called the greatest story ever told. It is the greatest story ever told. The story of the war between light and darkness between education, intelligence, and wisdom and understanding and and the world of darkness and ignorance and ill-informed stupidity and ignorance. and That's the war of the world, the war for man's kind's mind, the mind of men. And so what I'm saying is that the Bible is talking about this greatest story ever told is the war between ignorance and brilliance intellectual, spiritual enlightenment as opposed to the prince of darkness, the devil. And the, the devil is simply taking the word evil and putting a D in front of it, it becomes devil, devil. 
The devil is evil because he's in the prince of, he is the prince of darkness. And so that's why today the world of mankind here in America, especially, so many people are in the dark about things which are going on. And that's a term we all understand when you say the people are in darkness. They're in darkness because they don't know what's going on. They are, and when you finally, somebody who is have highly enlightened with light in, in themselves and they're trying to teach you and when you finally see a little glimpse of what they're saying and they are able to finally get a little piece of light into your life through their explanation you say oh I see what do you mean you see they're talking to you how do you see well, it's just an expression. Oh, I, uh, it just dawned on me what you're, what you're saying. Oh, I see. It just dawned on me. What dawned on you? The intellectual and spiritual enlightenment. The person is trying to educate you. And so, therefore, you're sitting and listening to this person who's trying to enlighten you. And uh, because you've been in the dark all of your life, you've been serving, like the Bible says, the, the God of this world is the prince of darkness, the devil, the evil one who works in the who works in the dark. And now we are finally, as Americans and the world in general, are finally waking up to the fact it's everywhere now in the news. It's everywhere now in the media. That governments have been working in the darkness for all these years. They never told us because we were too ignorant. We were like children and we didn't realize governments were working in the dark. They even have called black projects mm -hmm. and they are working in the dark. They're doing things that they're not telling you about. They are experimenting on humans. They are, you know, dropping chemicals on us to kill us. They are doing all kinds of things around the world, governments are, that they're not telling you about. And so they are doing them in the dark. And so therefore, anyone who comes around and tries to wake people up to what's really going on, they are trying to enlighten you. They're trying to enlighten the world. And people who do that are usually thrown into prison and locked away, or as the scripture says, they are crucified, nailed to a stake, and die. <clears throat> this is why uh, the whole story goes back to the New Testament story of Jesus. The bottom line is the war between light and darkness, trying to wake up the human mind on the earth to the real stories which are going on in the world today. And this is why Jesus is referred to as God's Son. S-U-N. No, mm -hmm. not S-O-N. S-U-N. And since the earth only has one Son, Jesus is referred to as the only begotten Son. The only begotten Son that serves us here on the earth is one Son. It's God's only begotten Son. And He is the light of the world. And He is our risen Savior. And, of course, the sun rises every morning as a Savior. So once you see that it's a metaphor, a symbolic metaphor, or what we call a Bible code. And so we're hearing a lot about Bible codes. Well, in the Hebrew, original Hebrew writings, what we call the original Hebrew writings, the rabbis would tell you there's about seven different encoded messages in the Old Testament. Not in the King James Old Testament, but in the original Old uh, Hebrew language. There's about seven different codes encoded in the Old Testament, which we today refer to as the Old Testament. And so that's what I've been trying to do for many years is tell people that when you read something about Jesus, whatever happened to Jesus in the Bible, that's what happens to intellectual enlightenment. Where uh, Whatever Jesus said in, re in relation to something that happened, that's what the intellectual enlightenment would say about a situation. 
And so little by little, people are beginning to understand that the governments of this world have been keeping us in the dark. They are evil. They are working behind the scenes to do things to us and about us that we don't know anything about. And there is no, in point of fact, no truth in government whatsoever. Mm. You know, this is an interesting point because, okay, I want to throw something at you and and, uh, uh, see what you think of it. Because before there was really a legitimate written language, before there was any kind of religious organization of any sort, and, and, and I do mean going back to a time when just it simply did not exist, uh, you know, I, I don't believe religion always existed. However, um, in a way, it kind of always did. And the funny thing about the Christian metaphor is that it, it's an example of one of these things that is uh, uh, part of the human experience in that it has been true before it was told. It was true when it was told. It is true uh in the future <laughs> right it, it it's one of those examples where it is it is literally timeless because it, what it represents is something that was an immediately observable reality to ancient man right which is that it, in the dark terrible things could happen you could walk off the side of a cliff and not know it you know you could be taken by an animal which could see better than you and stalk and you wouldn't see him coming if you didn't set your fires, some animals would come and, and get you. If you did set fires, some animals would come and get you. You you had to be careful with the way you managed yourself in the dark. And, you know, there there was also the, the uh, almost instinctive uh, desire to rest when it is dark and to find a comfortable, safe place to do so. These are instinctive things, right? And the idea that the sun provides you with the ability to see, literally, uh, uh, to be enlightened because you literally can gain more knowledge with the ability to utilize your eyes much better. I mean, just that simple, right? And those metaphors also are transmitted into every language. It's not just English that uses these, you know, uh, 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 statements about enlightenment and, uh, you know, something is bright or the brilliance of something brilliant is a light term, but it's also a term of intelligence. Uh, in more modern terms, you know, of course, black projects, the black night of old stories, uh, uh, anything that was dark was foreboding, was worrisome because it had a bit of the unknown in it and it had added danger that you couldn't see coming it, and, and continues to be true today, right? What do they say? Uh, you, you bring this out into the light. We have Sunshine Week in Washington, D.C., where they try and expose. That's another thing. Exposing to the... What are you exposing it to? The light. Uh, when you expose something, right? Uh, all throughout the English language, but in every language, it translates the same way. Darkness is a problem, and light is a life giver and good thing. And the only way to defeat darkness really, is with light. And it's like a universal story that, again, like I say, spans time, absolutely is timeless, and uh, it can be related in every language. So it's interesting to me that, it, you know, a lot of people uh, latch on to this as the the whole truth, you know, uh, and they tell the moral stories. And the moral stories, in, in truth, in a lot of cases, are, are very interesting. Very good, very solid, very useful as lessons, as metaphors, right? Um, but there's a whole lot more to it, and and this is really the core of it. No matter no matter how you slice it, if you look at it philosophically, if you look at it uh, uh, dogmatically, because it is the truth and it is everything. No matter how you go about this, you can't say that what you've just said is is incorrect in any way, shape, or form. It is exactly uh, uh, what is being demonstrated here. Is that Light is life and the ability to have knowledge and darkness is not. And darkness is the dangerous thing and darkness can consume and get you lost. And maybe you never find your way back and nobody knows what happened to you because you just disappeared in the dark. Again, going back to ancient man, these things would happen. Uh, Jordan, you know, people fell into swamps and things because they couldn't see where they were going. 
you know, the light of the moon didn't necessarily take care of everything. If there was cloud cover or whatever, you couldn't necessarily see everywhere you were going in the dark, right? So all of this actually comes together and culminates in a, in a, uh, uh, I, I hate to keep using the word, but like a universal message that should be equally understood no matter what language, no matter what culture. This all makes sense across the board, doesn't it? It certainly does. And that's why people say things like, oh, I see. Okay, it just dawned on me what you're talking about. In other words, it's finally some light got into my dark world. Mm -hmm. And now I'm finally seeing what you're saying. Now I get it. Now I see what you're saying. <clears throat> and it just dawned on me. What dawned on you? The sun of light. God's Son, the light of the world, it just dawned on you what's being said. And Plato said something interesting. He said, I can understand. This is ancient Plato. He said, I can understand a child being afraid of the darkness. What I don't understand are grown men who are afraid of the light. <laughs> I thought that's true. So many people are afraid to see the light. They've been in the dark for so long. They're institutionalized. They've been listening to the darkness and being lied to and deceived for so long that they just don't want to hear anything that may be true. They don't want to deal with it. They, they are like the, like a, that movie we talk about all the time where the young attorney is harassing the witness, and the witness says, what do you want from me? And the attorney, the kid says, I want the truth. And he said, you can't handle the truth. Mm. That's the point I'm making, is that so many people in this world do not really want the truth. They want to believe what they want to believe. And that's what a con man is. Con men will tell you what you want to hear. So that's why they are always conning you into something, meaning they are telling you what you want to hear. And that's why you will end up supporting them, because you believe what they're saying. No, they are conning you. And that's why today, all over the world, the religions of this world, not the philosophical concepts, but the organized religious world is a con. It's not true. It's based on a myth uh, on mythologies and old stories, and and today we have the greatest story ever told is the story between light and darkness, mm -hmm. and Satan the devil is referred to as the prince of darkness. Why? Because it's, uh, he deals the world of darkness deals in criminality and things you can't see. And therefore, when somebody like Jesus comes along, he's God's son, the light of the world, and he is the one who sheds light on the evilness of this world, and the world doesn't want to be have the light shine on them, so they, in the, they crucify him. They arrest him, throw him into prison, call him a traitor, and he's guilty of treason. And therefore, the same old story continues without stop. Today, we have certain people who are brave enough to put their life on the line for good and to die to do what they want to do, and that is to expose the darkness to their fellow man. And what happens to them? They go to prison and they die in prison, or they are found guilty of treason and uh, so you have a young man, what was his name, the uh, the young guy who f told us about the NSA, the National Security State, NSA, what they were doing to the American people. Edward Snowden. Edward Snowden. And this young man puts his life on the line and stands up like a man for all of the people, the males in this country who are not men but are effeminate goofballs who are watching their ball games and drinking their beer and going to the work and crawling on their knees and crawling on their knees continually to their masters. you got a young man who decided to stand up like a man and tell the truth, tell the people of America what their government is really doing to them. He should be honored as a great American who did something 
that no other men would do and no other man would stand out like that. And so for that, he's being, you know, he's being sought after to be put into prison and he's called a treasonous traitor. It's just amazing to me how children are afraid of the dark and adults are afraid of the light. And so that's where we are today. I'm trying basically to say that the story in the New Testament you read about Jesus is just a symbolic story about the war between light and darkness and light and darkness in relation to the earth as the light of the sun in relation to the darkness of night. And so that's why all the evil creatures in the movies are always wearing black. They always wear black robes and black hoods and, and doing things in the dark is always related to being black and being in the dark. And good things are all the things that are done in the, in the light. And mm-hmm. so that's the bottom line on Christianity. It is not a historical study, a historical story based on historical facts. We now know that Jesus as a man actually never lived. But that is okay because when you start to do the research, most people don't do that kind of reading for years and years and researching this the subject. But if you go back into history, you will begin to see that all of the so-called important religious figures in the world, none of them ever existed. There's a lot of talk today about Muhammad as a possible as a possibly not existing himself. Muhammad may not have even existed. There are some Islamic scholars that are now questioning the very veracity of the existence of Muhammad as a historical figure. <clears throat> the more we find out about religion, the more we find out that these are, these are organized, uh, organized belief systems based on the teachings of secret societies, very powerful groups get together behind the world scene and come up with stories, and they start feeding those stories through the magazines, through books, through television, through movies. And before you know it, <clears throat> like uh, the Nazi propaganda minister said, that in order to mislead the people, you, you lie to them. But tell the lie over and over and over again until finally the world has finally accepted the lie as truth. And now you don't have to fool with them anymore. The people will believe whatever it is that you've been telling them, they'll believe it. Because after all, everybody knows it's true. We've heard it for years and years. No, you've been propagandized for years and years. And keeping in mind, as the Germans said, Propaganda does not deceive you. Propaganda helps you to deceive yourself. Mm. You're the one that bought into it. You're the one that believed it. You're the one that did not use your mind to think about what you were being taught when you were a child because that's that's when they're teaching you your religious beliefs, when you're a child. That's why that's why the Judaism, Christianity, and Islam have such an incredible effort to teach their children, to protect their children, and to teach their children what their belief system is so that when they grow up, they will continue to believe it. And nobody seems to have questioned, as I've said so many times in the past, why do you believe what you believe? You don't know for sure. Because we say we believe in Jesus. We believe in Christianity. That, in other words, you don't know, but you believe. Why do you believe? Whatever it is you say you believe in in relation to theology and religion is because of where you were born. Very simple. If you were born in Africa, then your belief system will be based on African Religions. If you were born in the middle of China, then your belief system would be based on the culture of China. If you were born in Russia, then you would believe according to the Russian beliefs of Orthodox. 
So it just depends on where you happen to have been born as to what it is you say you believe. It never occurred to you. Your beliefs are given to you as a child. You had no knowledge of any history. You had no knowledge of anything. You just bought into it. <clears throat> and one day somebody explains it to you where it actually came from. And then at that point you can say, oh, I see. It just dawned on me. Right. In other words, it finally some intellectual and spiritual enlightenment came into your mind and now you finally see what you have been taught was not true it was a metaphor it was a symbolic story and you took it to be fact and when you take something to be fact as christianity does this is why you have four thousand different christian uh, ideas and concepts around the world different denominations of christianity and they all have a different belief system. <clears throat> Why? Because nobody has the real truth. Everybody believes, but nobody seems to know for sure. <clears throat> well, now, uh, now it, it seems that the world is now entering into the age of forgetting the belief systems, and we're seeing it where the world is turning away from religions, and in doing so, they're throwing out the baby with the bathwater. Because Christianity has mis misled so many people into thinking that this is true, the story of Christianity and Jesus is true historical fact, and the more people educate themselves and go to universities and do the research and become scientifically interested in the history of the world, they begin to see that these stories are not true. Mm -hmm. And therefore, they throw away the baby with the bathwater. They say, forget it. We don't, we don't care about Jesus anymore. We don't care about Christianity anymore. Well, that's the church's fault because the church has presented the story as a history when there was no history. And it has not taught the people to think in terms of spiritually understanding with spiritual eyes to understand as a metaphor, a symbolic metaphor. And there, therefore, mankind is on its own. The church has provided no help to the human family to figure anything out. The synagogues of Judaism are, are Jews are on the each one is, uh, is, is on his own because the synagogues and Judaism as a whole has provided zero nothing of any intrinsic human value for anyone to understand anything about life itself <clears throat> and so all of these different religions eventually become tribal belief systems tribal systems, we're Republicans, we're Democrats, we're Jews, we're Christians, we're Islamic, we're Muhammad, we're followers of Muhammad. Nobody seems to realize that when everybody believes something, everybody is thinking the same thing. That means nobody's thinking at all. That's the problem. Nobody has questioned what they believe. Islam's will kill you. Because they believe that this is what their religion tells them to do. And Christianity is involved. Uh, as a matter of fact, Christianity has given birth to two world wars. The incredible wars of this world, besides the two greatest world wars, were fought within lands of Christendom mm -hmm. in Europe, <clears throat> where they talk about Jesus and the church. Well, that's, and the, and the Roman Empire gave us Christianity. Well, today we talk about the Holy Roman Empire, and that is Nazi Germany. Germany has always been understood to be the center for the Holy Roman Empire. And so in Germany has given us two world wars, and now we're heading for another horrible confrontation. It's going to be a horrible and terrible world if we go to war because the whole earth is going to be involved in this. Mm -hmm. And it's why? Because of what we believe. We don't know for sure. So that's what I'm trying to do is try and wake up people. 
<clears throat> wake the human race up to the fact that what you believe is because of where you were born. And that all based on Christianity and Judaism, which is based on Hinduism, the worship of the heavens. And then obviously it's the worship of the heavens. Ask any child where God is, they'll show, they'll point up into the heavens. And then the morning when the sun comes up, <clears throat> when you point up into the sky, you're pointing it to heaven. It's called heavens, the heavens. Well, God's son, the only begotten son of God, is in heaven. <clears throat> well, it's true, theoretically. <laughs> the son is in heaven. And so when you die, you're going to go with, with God's son into heaven. No, when you die, you're going into hell. Because hell is a place, is a word in, in the English, which comes from a, from a Phoenician Canaanite word, uh, Sheol. Sheol is what Hebrews call hell. Sheol to a Hebrew is a grave. Anything that dies, if you put it into a grave, mankind's common grave is called Sheol, or rendered in Greek, hell. And so that's where we go when we die. We go into hell. That's why Jesus went into hell. Mm. The scripture said when he died, he went into hell. Well, hell is a grave. She old. Oh, look, look it up. And so, uh, as I said, I have spent some 60 years looking at the, at the history of theology and religion. And realizing, as I did many, many years ago, back in 1959, in 1959, I began to really take an interest in the lies and the deception and the misunderstandings of politics and banking and government and sociological problems that people were having with their marriage breaking up, the kids are on drugs, there's a lot of lawlessness and incredible ignorance and stupidity, uh, I have just decided I wanted to talk to the world and try and have people think for the first time about where things have come from, where do their ideas arrive from, where, what do the words actually mean in etymology, tracing back the concepts and ideas of the world. And that's where we are today. We're an ignorant, ill-informed people of the world, and we're all being led. We're being led into wars and violence and the destruction of civilization. <clears throat> and I'm trying desperately to just show the people of the world who want to know, and obviously there's not a whole lot of people who want to know because they already know. Most people feel they already know everything they need to know about everything. They're Catholic, and that's it. Anything that's not Catholic is, you know, is, is against God. Mm -hmm. Or if you're a Muslim, they don't need to know anything. Anybody who doesn't love Muhammad and crawling his knees to the moon god Allah uh, should be put to death. <clears throat> except the Jews, and the Jews are God's chosen people. Obviously, they are the only ones that have a relationship with God on the earth and in the heavens, period. And all of these things are belief systems. Nobody understands or knows. They believe. And belief is an incredible thing. And, and we talk about faith and have no idea where the word faith really comes from and what it means. And, and my God, we, we use terms every day in theology and religion and government, have no idea what they mean or where they've come from or what they're actually saying. When we hear the word democracy being bandied around in America, we think of democracy. That means every man has an opportunity to say what he wishes and to, you know, believe what he wants and choose for himself. That's not what democracy means. It doesn't mean that. There are two kinds of democracy. There is a classic democracy coming out of the ancient Greek world before the Roman Empire ever existed. Mm -hmm. And now there is something we have today which is called a classic or corporate democracy. We have in America a corporate democracy, and that's what's being promoted all over the world. Democracy 
in, in the world that we live in is a corporate democracy. It's a business. Well, point of fact, let me, let me ask you a question here. Because point of fact, my understanding of the classic Greek philosophy that, uh, that, that gives birth to that word, um, is, is effectively, I mean, for, for lack of a better phrase here, is effectively mob rules. Now, that means that the majority can make a decision and that's that. Uh, that's right. That's right. And and that is mob that is literally what the mob rules means. The majority of the mob, if they make a decision, that's all there is to it. It doesn't matter what the uh law says. Law, the more the morality, the ethos of the people, it, it is irrelevant because it is just the will of the people. So, right. you know, if, if they decide that listen, cannibalism is just fine among the majority, that's that. That's, uh, right. that's the way it'll be. And now this is kind of interesting to me because when it was more of a tribal situation, when you had smaller numbers of people, actually a democracy makes sense. Because, look, if you got 10, 12, 20, 30, 100 people, most times you would figure that the majority of them would not make the poor decision, right? But by default, the majority of the people are also not among the smartest of the people. See, th th this is the thing that, that always disturbs me when I hear the word democracy, because I think about it that way. But these people that are talking about it now are not even referring to that. They're, they're not even remotely referring to that. They're evoking it. They're trying to give you the concept that it means that everybody has a say, uh, uh, which, which sounds all good and positive until, you know, I mean, I hate to make a joke of it, Jordan, but, I mean, the reality is, that the majority of people are not the smartest of people. It's just that simple. That's so true. you're asking for the rule by the dumbest people to That's be made right. for everything. And this is not <laughs> this is not wise. Okay. That's why America looks like it does today. Yeah. <laughs> so so that that but the thing is when they throw it around now, it's just meant to tell you you have a voice. And it's a deception in and of itself. Um, which I think is the point you were making. Now, another point I want to make here really quickly, because you always suggest wonderful reading material to me, and if I can find a way, I'm not sure if I can figure out a way to share these books with you uh, or, or to get copies of them once again for myself, but a Catholic philosopher, believe it or not, uh, who, who talks about nonviolence and uh, wrote, wrote two very interesting politically-based books, uh, uh, about uh, JFK and also about Gandhi. They're both called JFK and the Unspeakable and Gandhi and the Unspeakable. James Douglas um, is a rather interesting fellow. Um, he's also been deeply involved in uh, nonviolent resistance to uh, nuclear weapons and a lot of other things. It, it, it's fascinating to me, and I've spoken to this man uh, on, on many occasions, and, and I don't have his phone number currently, but would love to get back in touch with him. Um, he seemed to transcend, although he's a devout Catholic. I mean, literally, uh, his, him and his wife run one of the Catholic houses, so to speak, and all that. Um, but when he talks about this concept of, of, of a dark and light engaged with one another and battling one another, the titles of those two books, and he wrote several others, by the way, The Peaceful Cross and uh, some, something else, uh, the, the, uh, the Nonviolent Coming of God or... I, I forget those titles. If you look them up, James Douglas, you'll find them. But uh, very interesting because he codifies the adversarial mechanism on the planet that uh, that, that he believes basically uh, uh, was the force that jumped up and took JFK uh, at a time when he was turning toward peace, uh, that jumped up and took Gandhi, who was the exemplar of nonviolent resistance. Uh, is is what he describes as the unspeakable, which is a term that was coined by a, by a, a Catholic monk many years ago when he took a vow of silence and wrote letters to everybody across the planet. It's a whole story, but um, it is fascinating to me that even when the man is trying to break it down to its most basic values, that uh, it includes darkness. But is not darkness in and of itself, that there is more to it. And I think this is where uh, uh, sometimes I, I feel strange thinking about just the battle between light and dark. Because, point of fact, again, we have the ability to battle darkness, right? 
We have the ability to put light into darkness. We can light a city now. We have the technology. We have the capability. We have the, the, and, and this is, is metaphorical as well as, uh, uh, you know, just physical, real world, everyday commonality. We can light the world anytime we want. Okay. It is by choice that darkness exists where it does. Because again, we have the capability. But there are other things to this that don't seem to have words. You see, we have the words for the battle of light and darkness, but there's this adversarial extra other presence that comes along with it and wields darkness as part of its weapons. It's not the only weapon, but it's part of its weapons, you know, uh, along with uh, the suffering and tortures of man and the things that build up anger that seem to come from nowhere and all of that and the divisiveness, the, the, the turning one another on each other, even in the daylight. It, it It's one of those things that I also think is represented in the biblical metaphors. The idea that there is the struggle watching, yes, darkness claim light and then light claim darkness once again. Sure, this is the back and forth, but that's always going to happen. It is what happens outside of that paradigm, right? Once you understand that this is the back and forth, it'll always be this way. Or it will always be this way for as long as there's us here to sit and think about it. Because as you've stated many times, no sun, no life. (laughs) Right? So without that battle, we're not here anyway. Too much sun, we're going to burn up too. That's the other thing. So, you know, you got to kind of spread it around. Um, So light and darkness have their purpose. But there's there's something other here. And I, I hope that maybe in a later episode we can discuss... That other thing, that adversarial thing that is the space between the stars, if you will. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I, I offer this, and I want to I want to share some of this stuff with you. If I get a chance, I'm definitely going to find a way to uh, to get us some copies of his work, and uh, I urge people to take a look at it as well. And uh, you know, if there's a way we can. Uh, I'm going to see about contacting him, too, just to see in general. And if I can share it with you, I'd like you to take a look at it and uh, look at this concept of what he calls the unspeakable. Um, Again, it wasn't invented. The term wasn't invented by him, but he sort of explains it. And uh, it's it's interesting to me that occasionally you see a guy like this who takes the lessons, believes the lessons, but somehow also sees past them at the same time. they're very, very rare. Most people just take the children's Bible version of things and right. think, you know, uh, I've been taught not to steal because this is what happens when you steal. And I've been taught that if you tell the truth, eventually it'll all pay off because at the end of the day, you know, Christ ascends to heaven and he is redeemed and, and, and through his suffering, so are we. And I, I, I get all that, but it goes a lot further than the children's book version, you know. So uh, uh, th- this is the depth that you're starting to visit here with the astrotheology question, I think. And anyway, I'm, I know that's a long way to go around, but I, I think it's uh, I-, I think it's worthy of mentioning that there is more to it, and uh, the depth by which you will discover that you, the listener, not you, Jordan. Uh, is is absolutely dependent upon your willingness to keep going. Um, if you want to study this, if you really truly want to understand this, you've got to go past the cover of the book. You've got to go past the first chapter, you know, not literally the book itself, but what I'm saying is you've got to read not only the lines but between them. And you've got to read every page and you've got to lay them side by side and figure out why the timeline makes sense. Even though it's not a historical timeline, there is a timeline. There is a journey. There is an understanding. And there's a lot of philosophical ways to begin to get at this. But it all comes down to a universal truth, I think, Jordan. Um, mm-hmm. But what do, you, what do you think of my thoughts? As you're, you're you're inspiring these, by the way, as you're speaking. I just want you to know that. But well, I'm letting you know in real time where my mind is going as I'm listening to you. Well, this is why 
we have in courts, <clears throat> we have the 12 juror system, where you have 12 of your fellow men come in, and they're going to help bring to light the truth. Right. They're going to help bring the truth to light. And so they put their minds together, they hear the evidence on both sides, and they're going to think about it as a group. As a group of humans, they give them, that's the idea in a court. So you let them, all 12 of them, sit and talk among themselves and let them work it out and see what they think is the actual truth of the matter. And if they need more evidence, then they will tell the judge and they will give you more time and provide you with whatever it is you need because if there's a problem with your thinking, uh, the bottom line is in the court you have 12 jurors who are going to help bring to truth the light. They're going to bring the light of truth to this dark situation. And so that's why you have them in a courtroom. There's 12 jurors because the 12 jurors represent the 12 months of the year. This is why Jesus had 12 apostles and the 12 tribes of Israel, the 12 symbols on the breastplate of the high priest of Israel. The 12 represents the 12 months of the year, and each month was 30 days, and there were 12 of them, 360 days, and it was divided into 12 separate months, and each one represented one of the constellations of the zodiac, the 12 symbols of the zodiac. And so the 12 symbols of the zodiac ended up being the 12 helpers of light. They help God's son spread his light. And so the 12 signs of the zodiac are the 12 months of the year, like the 12 jurors in a jury system. They help to bring to light the truth that has been covered in darkness. And so that's why we have the 12 apostles, because it represents 12 months of the year, which is actually helping God's Son, the light of the world, to shed his light. He, uh, he's, he's doing it through January and February and March and April. Each one of the apostles are helping God's Son spread his light. And so the bottom line is I'm talking about is there's a symbolic story that has been put into <clears throat> the uh, historical context. So it's supposedly actually happened in history when in point of fact there was no history connected to Judaism, Christianity, or Islam. These are just belief systems based on <clears throat> things that could go as far back as the ancient Hindu. On um, astrology and astrological calculations in the heavens and the story of Christianity, Judaism, and Islam goes back to Hinduism, which is actually the story of the universe, of, of the whole, how it affects the heavens over the earth. <clears throat> to understand the stars and the moon and the planets and the sun and how they all affect us and our belief systems. So that's what we're doing here. We're just talking about a symbolic story that people have mistakenly been taught to understand as actual history when there is no history. And that's why there's so much confusion. And the, and the churches have become known as denominations. This is like where you divide up money is in denominations. And so this is what I have been looking at for some 60 years is the misrepresentation of the actual truth. And I feel that these are the days in which time now has come for truth to prevail and the people are know that they are not being told the truth. We now see that our governments have been lying to us our institutions, our banking institutions have been lying to us. Our military installations have been lying to us. My God, there's nothing that we have come up with as a human institution that has not been corrupted and lying to us. And so what makes you think that religion is not equally as, as vulnerable to this? Our religious beliefs are nothing more than belief systems based on 
uh, the old misunderstandings that we've been taught by Rome. The Roman Catholic Church gave us what we call today Christianity. Christianity came out of the Roman Empire. <clears throat> and when you begin to see the story in relation to astrology, it all begins to make sense. Now we see why Jesus' mother was a virgin, because one of the constellations of the zodiac was Virgo, Virgo the Virgin, which was always promoted during the time of spring when the life would come back to the northern hemisphere. God's son came back, he, he, he promised he would come back, and he came back and brought light into the world. He was the light of the world. And so we're just looking at these symbols and the ancient stories and for the first time trying to understand how they are just metaphors. Nothing to do with actual history, and that's why we're having the trouble we are today in America because Americans are easily misled. They have been lied to and misled so many times, and that's why I am trying in a small way, my small way, to wake people to the effect that nothing that we have come up with as humans, institutions, is perfect. None of it. Mm -hmm. Our religions have been, have been messed with. Our governments are lying to us. Our banking institutions are lying to us. The whole world is lying in the power of the evil one, the scripture said. The whole world is in the dark. And that's why people who want to try and shed some light on a subject are usually end up found dead somewhere or put into prison forever and never heard from again. Because the system is not interested in you telling the world the stuff that they have been trying to get people to believe, and now all of a sudden, because of you are coming along, trying to intellectually and spiritually enlighten people, you can go to prison. They will find your body somewhere in a big city in an alley somewhere. Mm -hmm. You talk too much, you think too much, and you're trying and you're causing trouble for young people because the young people are thinking and they've got energy and they want to do things because they're energy. And so that's why we give the governments give them ball games, you know, send the kids out to play ball, right. let them burn up their energy that way. Don't you know? You don't need to teach these kids what's really going on, what we adults are really doing. Don't have to tell them all of that stuff. Give them some ball games. Let them go out and play basketball and beat each other up and fight each other on the on the mound and fight each other in their games. <clears throat> That's why when you're going out and killing animals, you call it big game hunting. Right. And so, I've I have understood some sixty years where this world has come from, where it is now, and where it's going. And I know that nothing new under the sun. The more we change, the more we stay the same. We're still believing the same old stuff. Well, and that's why I'm trying to do something to help people to wake up. No, and you are, Jordan. Now, now, one, one, two key things I want to mention here, and we're going to go to a quick break. Uh, one is this: that, um, quite frankly, um, you know, they 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 don't always disappear you into a jail cell. On occasion, uh, something happens, and they call it an assassination. They usually blame it on somebody. Uh, you know, and, and you're publicly executed as an example. You know, uh, uh, very much like the old lords, so to speak, used to, uh, put a head on a pike. You're, <laughs> you're, you're, you're meant to remember that if you speak the wrong phrases, uh, you're done. Uh, you know, I, 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 I point to Dr. King, I point to JFK, I point to a lot of people, but, you know, Gandhi was assassinated, a lot of people were. Anybody who spoke against the real system, uh, they get silenced one way or another, and sometimes they're made an example of. Uh, most, most of the time, though, Jordan's exactly right. You, you just, you never heard from again. That's that. <laughs> and, yep. uh, uh, that, that, that's been a truth for a long time. That's not, you know, just since the existence of America, we're not the only people that did it. Uh, it, it, it is a, 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 a human phenomena that those who speak the truth will, uh, uh be, be treated in exactly that way. And why? Because just like Jordan said during the first show, uh, the crowd will say, give us Barabbas. 
uh, because that's what the democracy will demand. Yes. Anyway, uh, also note this. In the word belief, you know, right there smack in the middle, a little hint for everybody. The word lie is contained there as well. Just saying. Just saying. Jordan <laughs> Maxwell is with me, and uh, we're going to take a quick break, but the Ocelli Effect will return right after this. We're continuing the series on astrotheology with Jordan Maxwell. Now Jordan Maxwell is leaked here at Ocelli.com, but that's my fault. I was talking to Jordan <laughs> during the break and lost track of what it was I was playing in the commercials there. Or it's not really commercials. I give you guys little clips and uh, a little promotion for the one listener who uh, uh, supports us steadily here at Ocelli.com. But, uh, but quite frankly, you know, what, what is it? Music that's contributed by listeners. There are uh, notes of uh, the other shows that we're we're doing on the network, you know, stuff like that. But uh, but that's it. You know, I'm I'm not here to sell you stuff. Uh, I'm I'm here to try and uh, give you options so you can uh, go ahead and seek any type of knowledge that you find worthy of your search. And uh, certainly, as uh, someone who is worthy of your search, and knowledge that is worthy of your search is. Is, uh, is Jordan Maxwell, who's with me tonight, jordanmaxwellshow.com. Yes, all three words together. jordanmaxwellshow.com is his website. It is the only website that is Jordan Maxwell's. I do stress only because there are other websites that kind of look like they do. And, I, and, you know, you guys sent me a couple of them recently, and I explained. Yeah, that looks like it's Jordan's website, doesn't it? It's not. JordanMaxwellShow.com is the only website that is Jordan Maxwell's, okay? And over there you'll find the Research Society where you can get deeper into this topic tonight, which is astrotheology, but it links perfectly, interacts with, is interwoven with all the other topics that are in, in deep detail in the research society there, including government, monetary policy, uh, money itself, okay? Uh, religion, sure, on a lot of different levels, not just the astrotheological, but uh, Jordan shows you a lot of uh, interesting things, images, articles, uh, geez, uh, audio, video, presentation, you name it, uh, a lot of stuff over there. I'm a member over at the Research Society, and I definitely suggest you do that. Uh, but there's also a public area. You can email Jordan. You can make a, a contribution toward his, uh, you know, care and feeding. I know I make that joke. And, uh, you know, Jordan, when, when, when I've got a project or something, like, well, actually, I have one now, and I, and I would say, <clears throat> You know, if anybody makes a contribution toward me this month that's going to go to the care and feeding of the monkey behind the microphone that keeps the show going, uh, you know, stuff like that, or you can, you can pay for the care and feeding of the monkey while he travels. I call myself a monkey literally because I, I actually feel bad, uh, uh, asking, you know, sometimes, but the truth is that, uh, telling the truth doesn't pay real well. And, uh, the, the only thing that, uh, that allows some of us to survive, quite frankly, is the, uh, the, the generosity of those that find value in what it is we are presenting. Now, I do it as a radio broadcaster. I am what I am and whatever, but Jordan is a, uh, a fundamental teacher in the knowledge base that, uh, that I use. Okay. So, uh, I certainly suggest to you guys. That, uh, that you take the time to consider doing that. I mean, you know, I appreciate any help that you give me, and I know Jordan appreciates it very much when his life is made a little better by somebody who appreciates his work as well. So, uh, so, so there you go. I say that again. And, and there's a real easy way to do it. There's a, pay, a PayPal button there. You can make a contribution. Uh, all that. There's the public area, streaming videos. The research society money goes toward the maintenance of the website and the webmaster okay but uh but a direct contribution to jordan goes straight into making his life a little bit better if you can so that's that jordan and that's all at jordan maxwell show.com so i turn it back over to you jordan because um well you know I, I i talked a lot there obviously i was promoting your website but uh even during the break i'd like you to note for the listener here that uh, that you're not annoyed by my interruptions cuz on occasion I get these messages that uh I talk too much when I have you on and um 
I, I want you, those who complain about that, to know that uh, not only does Jordan uh, uh, approve of that, but he actually appreciates it, is what he told me during the break. And uh, uh, Yeah, for, let me say yeah. it. Let me say it. I am very delighted when I'm on your show. This is why I have consented to be on your show every week, to do it on a regular basis, because I very much appreciate the way you handle the show. I've done hundreds, countless hundreds of shows over the years. I mean, many years ago, I had counted it up to 600 radio shows. And since then, that was some 20 years ago, I have forgotten how many shows I've done since then. So I've done a lot of radio over the years. <clears throat> but I really appreciate the way you help me to... Uh, to talk with the people. I really appreciate that. And I'm, I like that because I don't have to carry the show on my own and by myself because I feel like I'm, you know, just rattling on and people don't want to hear somebody just rattling on. And so you help by breaking it up and giving me some ideas and viewpoints. And then we go to the audience and have other questions come in. I like the way you handle your show and that's why I'm doing it. Uh, every week. So I really appreciate you chiming in and helping the people to understand some of the things I'm trying to say that a lot of people say that I repeat myself. Well, yes, I do repeat myself because I'm going off the top of my head with all of that I talk about. I've been reading and studying for years and I've had all kinds of experiences traveling around the world talking to all kinds of incredible people. And so I just speak from the heart. I'm not, you know, I'm not, I don't have a speech writer. I'm not running for Congress or running for president and have a speech writer. I'm just telling you what I feel from my heart because of my experiences in my life. And that's why I really very much appreciate having a talk show host who wants to help by adding some ideas that I hadn't thought about. So I really appreciate it. That's why I do your show every week, because I enjoy the way you do it. Well, we appreciate you certainly, Jordan. Uh, me, you know, my, I'm speaking for the listeners too. I know that they appreciate it. And uh, listen, you know that 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 complaint about you repeating yourself. Um, I, I understand why they would say that, but at the same time, um, you know, if you if you're telling the truth, <laughs> again, here's the problem. Um, there's only so many ways you can put words in order to t to tell the same story. You know, and the fact is that it, it has not become the common knowledge. You know, the majority of people don't have this. So what choice do you have but to repeat yourself? Honestly, uh, you know, if, if you haven't gotten the message through, what do you got to do? You got to say it louder. You got to say it in a different place. You got to try and say it to different people. If you can't get a message out, you got to keep trying and, uh, what, what, what are you supposed to do, though, if there's just one way of explaining this pretty much, you know, yep, and you, you're right, you know, you, you've got to you're 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 fluent in English, Jordan. I don't know if you speak another language, but uh, I, I do know you speak English well. And, you know, it, as many options as there are in English, quite frankly, it sounds repetitive if you're telling the same story over and over again. And again, if people are not hearing it enough. What do you got to do? You got to tell it again. So <laughs> that's exactly right. You know? That's that's what I feel. I feel the same right. way that I may repeat myself. I'm doing it out of my heart because I'm just talking. I'm just speaking. I'm not, I don't have a speech writer. I'm not professional, so it's all glossy and it's all classy and well spoken. I'm just an ordinary man pursuing extraordinary knowledge. I have been for so many years traveling to meet all kinds of strange people and pursuing extraordinary knowledge. And I want to talk about the things that I have learned. And so I do it off the top of my head. I'm not writing any speeches for myself because I don't like hearing people give speeches. I like to hear people's talking from the heart, what they really believe or what they really think. And that's what I do. So I'm not trying to be a showman. I'm trying to be a teacher. And I love being able to uh, connect to an audience. I do that many times when I was speaking 
you know, to audiences at seminars. I, so many times when I have been invited to speak at large conferences uh, before hundreds of people, I would be introduced, and as I'm walking up onto the platform, as I'm being introduced, I have no idea in the world what I want to talk about. None. I haven't got the faintest idea of what I'm doing here or what I want to talk about and what I want to leave with the audience. I have no idea in the world. I just know that this is something I want to do, and, and I have so many things I want to talk about. I don't have to write them down. I don't have to have a speech written out. I'm talking straight from my heart, things which I have actually seen and heard and experienced in my life I want to tell my fellow man about and help my fellow man to wake up to see the things that I've been privileged to see. I have met so many different kinds of people in this world that you don't know that I know. And I've seen a lot of things that other people are not privy to know that even exist. But I would like for people to know some of the things that I've seen and be aware of some of the knowledge I've been given. I'm not the world's foremost authority on anything. I'm just an ordinary man pursuing extraordinary knowledge. But that's the way I operate. I just repeat myself because I know I'm talking to new audiences. You never know who is in an audience. <clears throat> I learned that a long time ago. <clears throat> you just continue to teach people the same thing, and eventually it will catch on and people will finally begin to see it. Because sometimes it takes repetition. And I have a lot of people who email and call me and say, Jordan, you know, the things you're talking about today, I heard 35 years ago. And I never forgot those. And I've always followed you since then. It was very, and I've heard you say it over and over again, things that I consider to be very important things that you told me many years ago. But I'm still following what you're doing and all the new stuff you're telling us. So I don't see anything wrong with repeating yourself when it is coming from the heart. I don't write speeches. I couldn't care less about professional speech writers. I just do what I do. I'm just an ordinary man pursuing extraordinary knowledge. Mm. And, and I love telling other people about the things that I've learned. And, it's a, and it really is an incredible world that we live in, how much we don't know. Well, it is extraordinary knowledge, and and you know what's what's uh, again. I I hate to go back to it once again, but this concept of being enlightened, right? Um, it seems as though, and 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 I meant it when I said it in the first hour. It's a choice to not battle darkness, right? It, it, it's a choice to simply accept it and go to sleep. Oh, wait a minute! Now we're really using a lot of metaphorical statements that people use all the time. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, and and. <laughs> Uh, sure, it it is. It's a choice. Um, it's a choice that is easier in a lot of ways, uh, because you know battling light. Just forget about the the consequences of it and all that. It requires work. It requires work. Um, sure does. And and you put a lot of work in, uh, doing so, and uh, it's it's really. It it's hard though to to get some people to understand how. It seems like some of the very smart people out there are, yeah, they're 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 smart and and as in they can repeat what they've been taught. They're they're smart because uh, mathematics uh, uh, are are easy for them uh, one way or another. Uh, maybe chemistry is something that is a a logic in and of itself that they can wield very well. Uh, any of these things, they're engineers even. And yet, when you get to some very basic concepts, you realize that, well, I don't know how smart they are. I don't know how brilliant they are because they can't seem to process this kind of knowledge. Now, the thing is, to me, it doesn't seem like it's hard to do if you put in a little bit of effort. Well, but, uh, but, but some people, you know, no matter how easy you make it for them, will simply not go with it. Now, on the other hand, there are others who uh, don't seem to be as bright, there's there's that <laughs> metaphorical language again, who, 
you say these things too, and it doesn't necessarily get through the first time, right? Uh, That's right. You sort of plant a seed, though. They don't forget it. Maybe they didn't quite have it all dawn on them immediately. <laughs> there we go with the light yeah. thing again. But but the fact is that uh, that sometimes you got to plant a seed and you got to let other light come in and make that seed grow. And uh, you, you you know what you do when you, when you got a good crop going? Usually you plant more seeds like it. You make your crop bigger, and uh, those seeds look the same. So Jordan's statements sound the same because they're the same seeds. <laughs> you know, and yeah. uh, that, that that that's why that is. But what, what do you think of that, though? I mean, do you think it is a, a matter of laziness or conditioning that gets somebody to just, you know, here, here we go, analogy again, not face the light, if you will, uh, you know, to uh, to just go to sleep as opposed to doing the work that would be required to battle the darkness, to to actually lift the veil and look beyond it. With well, a bit of I have said in the past that if you were sound asleep and you're very, very tired when you went to bed and you're sound asleep in a very dark room and someone slipped in very quietly and stealthily, quietly slipped over to by your bed and turned on a 600-watt light bulb, your immediate normal reaction would be to jerk around and turn your head away from the light. Why? Because your eyes are used to the darkness. They are relaxing in sleep. And all of a sudden, they're hit with a powerful 600-watt light. And you turn your head, you don't, and, and while you may think it was funny doing that, watching their reaction, they don't think it's so funny. That's not the way of, a way to win friends and influence people is to wake them up with a bright light like that. They don't think it's funny. They, you know, they're, you've invaded their privacy. They were sleeping and you came in and did something and you made an enemy. And that's why the Apostle Paul said to the Christians of his day in the Bible, have I become your enemy because I've told you the truth? And so that's what happens when you you come into a room where people are sound asleep. They have no idea in the world what's going on in government. They don't understand what a bank is. They don't know why we have police departments. They don't understand the way commerce works. They don't understand who prints your money and how it's connected to the 14th Amendment and the and how the banks are actually run by the insurance companies. Insurance companies are put there by the people behind world government and people don't realize how the world actually works. And so what you're doing is you're coming in to their sleepy world when they're, si and they're very tired, sound asleep, and then you present them with knowledge, which is like a 600-watt light bulb. And their first of first reaction is to turn away. And now they're, they don't like you. They don't want you out of their life because you've woken them up. And now they have to look at the world the, the way it really is when they were so happy being sound asleep and restful. And now you've awakened them. And now they have to see the world the way it really is, and they don't like it. And I don't pre, and I understand they don't like it. I don't like it either, but I had to face it. And so I'm trying to help you to face it now before the end comes when you're going to have to face it. When you end up in prison, or when you end up, you know, going to jail for something, or you're going, to, you know, you're losing your home, you're losing your family, you're losing your, your marriage. When you're finally facing some terrible tragedy in your life, why? Because you didn't know what you were doing. You caused yourself terrible trouble. You didn't care to know. You didn't care about your children. You thought, you know, like any other animal, you just have a baby, let the baby grow up and be who it is. You don't care one way or the other. I have proven to myself, I have, I wanted to do it, and I proved to myself a long time ago that the reason why children today, grown children, we call them adults, are so screwed up is because their parents did not know how to raise them. Most people who are parents have no idea in the world how to raise a child correctly. 
I learned the hard way. I didn't have any children. But there was a young Mexican boy across the yard from me when I lived in North Hollywood. And I loved that kid because he was such a nice kid. But I found out one time I went to see him in his home. And his mother told me the trouble he was in. <clears throat> he was hanging around with gangs and getting in trouble. He was carrying a, and he had a gun and she didn't know where he got it from. Mm. And, uh, and he, and he was proud to show me in his bedroom that he had a knives and a gun and some of the other, uh, weapons. And that was his life, and he wanted to join a gang. And so I decided I'm going to try something just for the hell of it and see what happens. And I asked his mother if I could mentor him. Could I help to raise him? And the mother said, yes, I wish you would, because her husband was gone and she has to work every day and leaving the, the kid home by himself. And so... I started talking with him, and I would have him come to see me every day after school. When I get home from work, he would come over and tell me what he had done in school. And I started really putting pressure on him to learn, to study. I talk with him every day on how to think, how to use his mind, how to see the world, and how to understand the world he lives in. And I was continually on his back, making sure he was doing his homework, making sure he was understanding. And then in the summer when he wanted to go out and play, I sent, I, I rent and raved at him till he went to summer school to take up typing and to take up uh, advanced logic and all kinds of things I was handing him, telling him I wanted him to do. And I'm, and I didn't ask him, I'm telling you, this is what you better do. And then one day I find that I, 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 and one day I find he comes back to see me. Uh, you know, that was about, I don't know, seven or eight years I stayed on his back continually promoting him to read and study, et cetera, et cetera, and to think in terms of being a professional. And he ends up being a very, very highly intelligent young man. And he comes over to see me, and he said, "You know, I have uh, I'm now working with a big insurance company in Los Angeles, and I'm a, an accident investigator. And I've been put in charge in this large insurance company, chief investigator for the for the company. And about six months later, he contacted me again. He came by and wanted to go out to dinner, and he took me out to dinner." And he said, I have been invited to go to England to work with the Rolls-Royce company. They like me, and they've offered me a job, and I'm going to England. That's the last I heard of him. He went to England to work with the Rolls-Royce uh, auto company and the Rolls-Royce company. They build air, you know, they build jet engines. God knows they got all kinds of stuff. But my point is, is that I look back on him today, and see what he's able to do. He told me he's got a couple of homes he owns. He's got a wife and children. And he said, and you're the one that changed my life. And I'm working with a large corporation in England, doing extraordinary well, driving an incredibly uh, you know, expensive car and living a beautiful home. And he said, you're the one that changed my life because I listened to you. And so I tr I. You know, I proved it to myself. If you know how to train a child, the child will grow up to be a highly successful human. If you don't know how to train a child, then don't have them. Don't have children just because you think it's clever having babies. You have a child that's going to grow up to be an adult, and today we got seven and a half billion adults on the earth that collectively got an IQ of 40. Nobody seems to be able to think very deeply. Mm -hmm. We love to brag in America about how we have computers that can think for themselves. And I say, well, thank God at least something in America can think for itself, even if it's a computer. It's artificial intelligence, but my God, at least it's intelligent because the people of America have no concept at all in their mind as how 
America works. How does the world of mankind operate? Who owns our country? The United States of America does not exist. We are today, according to the law, we are a corporation like Ford Motor Company. We are not a country. We are a corporation. And because we are a corporation, we are all employees of the corporation. And once you see how the world actually, in fact, works, now you see why you get in trouble and you have to go to court and why you're going to jail and why you have to pay this fine and why you can't do this and you can't do that without a permit. you got to have a license. If you want to get married, you've got to have a license. If you want to do any business, you better get a business license. People in America and around the world do not know how the human world actually works. I've said it over and over and over again. Nothing on this earth works the way you think it does. Banks do not do what you think they do. We have something called river banks. What does a river bank do? It directs the flow of the currency. Your money is water. This is why we say money goes through your hands like water. Why? Because money is considered, under international maritime admiralty law, money is considered to be the law of water. This is why your house is underwater if you can't pay for it. This is why if, you, if you're going into court, you're going to have to get bailed out because you're in hot water. And so you're going to have to be bailed out. And if you can't get bailed out, then your body is a biological battery, a biological battery. So therefore, the court is now going to put you into a cell. And that's why you're going to something called a jail cell, because a cell is a battery. You don't understand how the government works. You don't understand how commerce works. Look up the word commerce in a law dictionary, and you will see commerce is a word for sex. Sex is referred to in law as commerce. It's a business. But thank God who you're sleeping with is none of my business. But who I sleep with is none of your business. It's a business. You don't think it's a business? When you get married, you've got a partner. That's a word in business. And if they are, and your marriage doesn't work out, you're going back to court. And it has nothing to do with talking to God because of your marriage. You're going to talk to a judge. You're going to court. Why? Because it's a business. You've got a license, remember? In order to get married, you have to have a license. It's called a business license. And so people don't realize how the governments of this world actually work. You have no concept in your mind about where the etymology of words have come from, the concepts and ideas and belief system, where they have come from, why do you believe them, you you see the policeman, but you don't know where the word police comes from, and you don't know why we use that word police. It comes from the word policy. Mm -hmm. Policy. Because the corporation called the United States is not the United States of America. That was done away with back in the 1860s with the Civil War. After the Civil War, there was declared no longer the United States of America. Because the American states were anything but united. We were not united. We just got to killing each other. And so we were not a United States of America. So therefore it was decided by the international banking cartels of the Knights Templars, who were the international bankers who financed the world. It was decided by them since we are no longer a United States of America. We're not united we will become a corporation. It was decided, let's make this North America a corporation, like Ford, like General Electric, like like uh, Exxon Oil. Wake up. The country you think you live in is not a country. It's a corporation. 
And a corporation is a business. That's why you have to have a license if you're going to get married. you got to have a license if you're going to be driving. you got to have a driver's license. <clears throat> you got to have a license to do business. It's called a business license. And if you're going to be an attorney, you have to have a attorneys and lawyers have to have a license. Why? Because they're using a book to make money, and making money is business. Mm. So if you're going to use a book to make money, it's called a law book, you're going to have to have a license because you're making money. It's a business. It's got nothing to do with law and justice. It's a business. It's a corporation. I, I advise so, people to look at the know. word practice as well because uh, there, <laughs> it's a business practice. These are yeah. business practices. You know that's that, that right. that's an interesting uh, uh, even in the medical practice, right? That's right. Hmm. Uh, interesting how that word seems to be rather universal. Now, I I got a couple of messages. I didn't ask for questions tonight, but I actually got a couple of messages, um, and I want to enter them in here before we run out of time. Uh, one of them is uh, very relevant to what you were talking about a little bit earlier. Uh, please ask Jordan what he thinks about the, hold on, the idea, excuse me, of, uh, of Christ as a teacher. In fact, I have heard Jews refer to him as rabbi or that people called him rabbi and they say that that made him a teacher. Uh, what about this? in context with what Jordan was talking about. Okay, so the, the idea about teaching people and enlightening them and the... Well, I would say, yeah. I would say that when you, uh, for the first time intellectually in your mind, finally see something so that you will say, oh, I see, it just dawned on me what you're saying. That implies that the light has just taught you something you didn't know about but somebody who was bright or brilliant tried to enlighten you and for the first time you listen with humility and humbly listen and you finally see what they're saying you say oh i see yeah it just dawned on me what you're talking about dawn like the sun yeah i i see now why because i'm now in the light and I've been now given some light on the subject. And so, therefore, I see. So, yeah, I would say that Jesus would be uh, the Christ, the Christos, as a teacher. Why? Because the Son does teach you things. You know, when you didn't know what was going on at nighttime until the Son came up and you saw there was something there that you didn't see last night, it's a teacher. Light teaches you things. That's why the people who are very, very bright, we say they're brilliant teachers. And so, yes, light is a teacher. You, dark doesn't teach you anything but not what not to do. Mm -hmm. And so... <clears throat> well, that's, that's the truth. As I said earlier, you know, there are dangers that you can't see coming. See, that, that, that's, that's right. the thing. It, it, is, it is actually darkness in, in and of itself is the same as ignorance. That's and, right. And that's why I said it's voluntary to kind of embrace darkness. I mean, this is what I'm taking from what you're saying. It's voluntary to embrace darkness, and as you embrace darkness, obviously ignorance comes with it. You can't see as much. That's right. Very simple. I mean, I know it sounds metaphorical and a little silly, uh, but uh, – and, and the other the other message, by the way, wasn't a question, but I'm going to read it off to you anyway uh, because it's a comment that had to do with what you were saying. Uh, you are charged to go into your cell. You are discharged when you leave your cell, uh, is the key phrase there. Uh, yeah, pointing right. out the rest of the metaphor with the battery you were talking about, uh, ju just a second ago. Uh, and, and, and of course you go before a circuit court, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, there, there, there's just so much of this. It is the transference of energy. And there is an esoteric aspect to this always. Matter of fact, Everything in, in, indeed is about the transference of energy. Even the sun over your head. That's really 
what the sun is doing is transferring energy. Now, that energy becomes light, but it also becomes nutrients for plants. It becomes nutrients right. for your skin. Uh, it becomes, you know, the thing that, yes, indeed, you can see it change the landscape around you. There's a lot being transferred in that energy. And all of these different practices that we were just talking about, these are all manipulations, transfers, additional transfers of energy. That's kind of the key here, actually. And that's an esoteric concept and, and, and occult concept, which occult, by the way, just, I know Jordan makes this point all the time, but I'll do it for once. Occult simply means that which is hidden. That's all it means. Okay. Mm -hmm. It is occult knowledge that all of these things are devised in order to control the flow of energy. If you control the flow of energy, you control how a society is organized. You control how a people thrive. You control how much they can travel from A to Z or from soup to nuts, however you want to say it. You have absolute control if you control the energy. And it's just that simple. That's why... The more magical aspect of it, the more esoteric, the more occult aspect of it counts. And I'm answering the rest of the comment from the person who made the battery comment, by the way, in doing so. But I think this is a relative point, and I know Jordan would agree with what I just said easily and probably expand upon it more in a future show. Yes, for sure, because there's so much more people need to know about the world they live in. You have no idea in the world why you have to go to a court. But it's because of the world is a business. The earth is a business. It's a business in space. We are sailing through space, and therefore we are a sailing vessel. And we're all on the sailing vessel that's sailing through space. So therefore we are on a citizenship. Get it, mate? There we go. We're on a citizenship. And this is why we have a dealership, a sportsmanship, educational scholarship. Everything is done in ship, this ship and that ship. And then when you finally figure out something that and to you is of real value, we say is you put a worth on it, W-O-R-T-H. Mm -hmm. Worth is the value of something. So when you have something that's of real value to you, not to me, but to you, something is very valuable, we say you are worshiping it. You are, it's your worship. No worth, W-O-R-T-H, ship. Worship has come to be worship. And so this is why you have so many different words that end in ship. Dealership, scholarship, relationship, dictatorship. Everything is ship. Why? Because ships are on water. And everything in the world operates on water. It operates on maritime admiralty. It's the symbol of money. Money makes the world go round. Money is water. Mm -hmm. That's why we say money goes through your hands like water. No, money is water. And then you will find out all, think about all the places where you hear about money being in relation to water. We've talked about loan sharks, and they provide a revenue stream, and the banks will levy your cash flow, and banks sell you down the river, while some banks are laundering money. And if you're on board, you're on the board of the ship of state, SOS is a, is a, is a term which is used when you're in trouble on the high seas. You will send out an SOS if you're having trouble. What do you talk about SOS? Save our ship? No. Secretary of State. Because your country is a ship. It's a ship of state. And we have a captain. And the captain is the law. He is the captain of the ship of state. And therefore, the Secretary of State is the SOS that you have to contact when you're having trouble in a different country. And if you are American and you get in trouble in another country, you go to the American Embassy in that country. And that's the Secretary of State is the SOS. Mm -hmm. Remember, we run, we, we, we run a tight ship. 
and one day your sh- and one day your ship will come in, and we got all kinds of terms like that. Money is called is like water is called liquidity. It's liquid. It's a liquid asset, and sometimes you are all washed up and you're all washed in debt. In court, you're in hot water and you need to get bailed out. Right. And you flood it with bail out money. We have a bank account has dried up. Why? Because you have an offshore account and you're drowning in debt and you're laundering money. Overall, then, you're in over your head. Uh, and you're in over your head. <laughs> you know, right. and, and that's, that's an interesting thing here. Now, I, I never heard SOS described that way before, Jordan. I got to tell you, because uh, I, I understood it as, yes, save our ships. I've heard that. But I've also heard save our souls. And that's right. I, and that's I, what that's what the Secretary of State can do. Yeah, but the Secretary of State can intervene. If you're in another country and you get in trouble, they're holding you a hostage. You right. contact the the United States Embassy in that country, and it goes directly to the Secretary of State, and that Secretary of State can intervene in your behalf. And believe me, the other country will listen if that Secretary of State. Issues a complaint and said we want our citizen back. You're holding an American. Many times the state, the country where you are, will release you. Why? Because that's they don't want to mess with the United States government. And the right. Secretary of State represents the state of the government, the United States. And so, well, what's interesting about Save Our Souls, though, Jordan, is it not only what you just said. But let's take it a little further. Uh, you, you stand on your feet. Your feet have souls, right? That's right. So mm. it has something to do with your standing. Wait a minute. That's a term, too. <laughs> what kind of standing? Are you in good standing? Are you, uh, you know, and, and here's the thing. What What is the commonality with being on the same ship? It means you're all standing on the same vessel, right? That's right. Exactly. Um, you know, Basically. so all of these things are actually interchangeably making sense if you really think about it. That's um, right. But but the unique thing here is and and, and the the grand deception to me is that uh, and and I love how you describe the the planet as a ship because it is look we, we we've got one I I know people have aspirations to go live on Mars and stuff <laughs> like that and and and, yeah. and colonize the moon and whatever uh, but uh, truth be told th- this is the only ship we have. So this is the only place we can stand, <laughs> okay? That's right. So this is where our souls are meeting, here on this common ground, okay? Uh, and that's why also many years ago in hospitals, when a baby is born, they will they will rub uh, ink on the baby's uh, foot and then put his imprint of the of the baby's foot on paper. Mm-hmm. And so now they are able to claim that they own your soul because that's what they wrapped uh, the, the ink on your foot and made a copy of it. So now it's theoretically the banks own your soul. Mm. And that's why when you go into hospitals, there's a whole world of, of dark secrets that have been kept from the people. Why do you have something called a hospital? It goes back to the Knights Templar, the Masonic Order of Europe that prints the money of the world. Mm -hmm. The Knights Templars were what we call the Pirates of the Caribbean. The Pirates of the Caribbean were the pirates that lived in the area we call the Caribbean. Even Disney has uh, movies, and ABC Disney made movies about Pirates of the Caribbean. And Disneyland has a ride called Pirates of the Caribbean. Which the why do first, you have pirates in the Caribbean? It goes yeah. back to the fact that the Federal Reserve and the Internal Revenue were, in the beginning, the Internal Revenue and the Federal Reserve were home office in Puerto Rico. Why? Because of the pirates of the Caribbean. Wake up. Your government is a pirating banking corporation. Mm. It's bigger than you think. You think the mafia is frightening? You need to look at what's really going on in America and around the world and who these people are who are the captains and the kings of industry. They're the captains of your life. It's an incredible story about how the world actually works. 
and you get in trouble because you don't know how the world works. Right. Well, look, two two quick points before we run out of time, believe it or not. Uh, this hour went by very fast. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, two quick points here is, you know, the uh, pirates were also known as privateers. And uh, if you notice private corporations, you know, they have their behaviors and personhood and all that for a good reason. Um, it, it, it all makes a lot of sense. You know, how is it that they can get away with continuously sending, uh, selling these certain types of poisons? Well, they had a license to do it, you know. Uh, but, but these pirates, these privateers had licenses, too. By the way, they were employed by the different, uh, you know, That's right. the different factions, and uh, uh, they, they certainly would accept paydays, and sometimes, you know, sometimes they broke their deals, sometimes they didn't, uh, had their own codes, and today, those codes are reflected in corporate policies. Um, one other thing is, you said years ago, they used to uh, print baby's feet. Well, I do know that um, <clears throat> less than five years ago, they were still doing it. Uh, and, and, and it's still common practice where you look, you've got to show proof of live birth. See your birth certificate. Yep. Certifying that there was a live birth. That's yeah. all there is to it. It's not, you know, it's not proof of identity. It's certifying, uh, that, uh, that in fact, a baby is born, and how do we prove that a baby's born? Well, you got to show that they're a soul touched the land, and how can you do that in a real-world sense? Well, you make a mark, and what better way than to make a unique mark like a footprint? That's so right. th this is the methodology, but there's a lot more <laughs> to that story as well. And I think uh, one, one of these episodes is going to have to just focus on it. In fact, I think the birth certificate is worthy of a two-hour discussion. I do too, uh, Jordan. and I think we'll do that real soon. Yeah, and and, yeah. and I would love to go in depth on it, but for now, uh, as we come to like the last five minutes, I'm just going to give it to Jordan and let him uh, uh, go through this. You know, wh whatever it is he wants to say, uh, and then we'll we'll close it out for the second episode. Now we went into a couple different directions here, uh, but I think it will all make very good relative sense as the uh as the series continues so and it always does by the way despite the fact that as jordan said he doesn't choreograph this or script it um we have a general idea we go forward with it uh for the most part it is you know we again it's mainly jordan uh and i just try to uh to guide <laughs> the situation a bit uh in 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 my way but uh but really this is about uh what what jordan has taught Will teach, you know, continues to teach. <laughs> uh, you know, here, here we go with that timeless kind of aspect of it, but it has been almost, uh, six decades now that, um, yeah, cause it's what, 50, 50, yeah, 59 years. Uh, so that is nearly six decades, uh, of, of you teaching exactly this, right? That's right. I've been trying for almost 60 years, uh, talking to audiences at seminars lectures, radio shows, the best I could do, you know, even at 19, 20 years old, I was doing this kind of thing, talking to audiences about theology, religion, government, military, how the government works, how banks work, what is an insurance company, and therefore the symbol in front of money as a little S with an I going through it that symbolizes money. No, it's an I as for insurance and the S is for script. Your money is called insurance script. It's an insurance policy. And therefore, if you are working and earning the I or the S in front of the number, then you are a security for the corporation. You're a security for the body social. And so when you retire, it means you're going home after work, you retire, you get social security. Why? Because you are the security for the body social. If you understand how the world works, and therefore that's when you don't understand who the police are, you don't understand why we have a sheriff, why you have to go to court, why do you have banks, what is the military really all about, that's what I've been trying to tell people for years. You don't know how the world actually works. And if you go on my website to Jordan Maxwell Show, that's the only website I have, 
and join my Research Society website, which is a second website I own, onto which I'm uploading every day through my webmaster. I'm uploading all kinds of information, pictures and documents and secrets of this and the secrets of that and the secrets of how this works and the, how where the words come from and the etymology of the words and the ideas and where the di- different churches have come from and how the underworld organized crime operates all around the world through churches, <laughs> through religious orders, secret societies. <clears throat> you have no idea in the world how the world really works and that's what I'm trying to do in my last days on this earth at 80 years old I am trying to help people to wake up to how the world actually works and I have stuff on my on my research website under one of the sections on my research website is interesting articles and I have some articles on that interesting articles on my research website that will blow your mind. Stuff you have never heard before about the government. Stuff you've never heard of before about who you are in international circles and what you are considered to be in the difference between a state citizen, a federal citizen, an international banking citizen, and what the difference is in courts and what, why sometimes you need a lawyer, sometimes you need an attorney. It depends on what you're doing and what kind of a court you're in. It's really extraordinary knowledge that most people have no knowledge of, and that's what I'm trying to do on my research society. So I would say I live my life on contributions, and it helps me to stay alive as a researcher and an author. It helps me to stay alive if I get some contributions and people who want to join my research society website because then I can keep my website up because I don't work for a living at 80 years old. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to stay alive and do the best I can on you know with nothing, with virtually nothing, and that's the way I live. I can't do half the things I want to do because I don't have the money to do it. So I have to be careful to stay alive. And so that's why I appreciate any contributions and anyone who wants to join my research society is helping me immensely. Go on my website, Jordan Maxwell Show, and you will see it. And it's all there. Go on the show, Jordan Maxwell Show, and listen to the article that's right there and it hits you. The first thing is me talking and listen to what I'm saying. I'm explaining who I am and what I'm doing and why I do it. And I want to thank you again, Chuck, for having me on the show, and I love being on the show with you. Well, so we'll, I, yeah, we'll I really appreciate it. it. We're, we're going to do this again next week. I mean, I, I, I thank you, Jordan, for uh, – you know, for, for teaching me, but also, uh, for doing this with us because, uh, it's extremely important. All of this knowledge, uh, if you do not understand the, the general behavior of the world around you, uh, how, how do you expect to be able to navigate through any of it? You that's know, right. that's, that's the key here. And, and last thing, just before we go, uh, on Facebook, a couple of people asked me if, uh, if I was going to try and do like an 80th birthday thing for you, <laughs> like <laughs> on the show. And I said, uh, well, I didn't really run it by Jordan, but I promise you the next time I have him on, I will mention it to him. So, uh, so I, so I'm mentioning it to you. <laughs> well, I'm not, I'm not totally sure I'll reach 80. <laughs> Uh, I think you will. I'm very old and tired and and wore out and burned out and sick, and I I live on sleeping pills, and I am very sick all the time. So I don't even know if I'm going to make it to 80. Well, I, 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 with hopes that you do. Uh, you just know that it's an option. I mean, obviously, I would I'd be more than happy to uh, to do like a kind of a Jordan Maxwell birthday special if oh, you want. You. Uh, but but it's up to you entirely. I mean, you know, you may not want to celebrate or whatever, or maybe you don't feel like you want to. That's up to you. But I promised them I would mention it, so I I, I keep my word, Jordan. <laughs> you I know, it. and I and I, th- I would consider it to be a real pleasure and an honor to have a friend like you. 
to do something like that, that would be nice. And I appreciate it if I'm well, if I am still here at eighty. Uh, then yeah, that would be nice. Well, then, then, then that's what we're going to try and do. But until then, yes, next week we will continue with part three on astrotheology, uh, provided all the internet gods and everything else come together to allow it. <laughs> you know, some things we can't help, and and occasionally somebody's sick or whatever, but. As soon as I can, we will get to episode three, and hopefully it's next Monday here at Ocelli.com. Again, go to jordanmaxwellshow.com. That is the only website, only, I stress, website that is Jordan Maxwell's. Join the Research Society. Contribute. Email Jordan. Let him know you appreciate him. 